Plan of Scale just introduced a really exciting new feature, but before we go any further, I do wanna say they pay me sometimes. They're not paying me for this video. I was not asked to make this video, but it does fall under our existing contract and I'm sure they're gonna be pretty hyped about it. They had no say in anything I'm discussing in this video. I just wanted to react to this because I'm actually genuinely excited. So knowing that, let's take a look at schema recommendations, which is an actually genuinely new idea I haven't seen others do before automatically receive recommendations to improve database performance, reduce memory and storage, and improve your schema based on production database traffic. Also, shout out to Taylor and Raffer for writing this. Taylor in particular, I've worked with forever. She's really good at what she does. For the last two years, we've been working on making PlanetScale Insights the best built-in MySQL database monitoring tool. Today, we're releasing a significant upgrade, Schema Recommendations. With Schema Recommendations, you will automatically receive recommendations to improve database performance, reduce memory and storage, and improve your schema based on production database traffic. Schema Recommendations use query-level telemetry to generate tailored recommendations in the form of DDL statements that can be applied directly to a database branch and then deployed to production. This fits really well within the existing planet scale model, which if you're not familiar, their whole thing is to do stuff kind of the same way that we do it in like GitHub, where you create a branch, which is an identical clone of an existing database schema. It doesn't have the data inside of it. It's just the, the shape of the models. Then you make changes to the schema. And if all goes well, you can then put it up for review. People can approve it. And then you deploy request similar to pull request and merge that in. And now you have your new database schema. Initially, this was cool by itself, but where they've pushed it even further, that's probably my favorite thing, is once you've made that deploy, they keep the old database around and they write to both databases for 30 minutes. So if it turned out you made a mistake, you can revert without losing any data, even the data that was written in that time. Mind-blowing stuff. So let's read more about this because I'm very curious. How to use schema recommendations. To find the schema recommendations for your database, go to the Insights tab, your Plan of Scale database, and click View Recommendations. You'll see the current open recommendations for your database. Also, if you're subscribed to your database's weekly DB report, you'll get an email with your first recommendations. The CEO of Planet Scale is actually in chat, unplanned. Let's go give it a shot in the upload thing production database. Planet Scale, here we have the databases for all of our Core T3 stuff, which is ping stuff. Names are confusing, don't worry about it. Here we have the upload thing production database. We go to the Insights tab, we have Recommendations. And we have three redundant indexes. We have an index for the key for API key on user ID on the app and the app ID on file. Interesting, so our key for managing deletions also has the app ID key within it, which isn't something I'd really thought about before. For context on why we made this decision, we had made a separate key for files that were deleted, so it was easier for us to only select files that were or weren't marked for deletion when we did size calculations. But since this index includes app ID, the previous index that is just app ID is no longer as valuable as it used to be. And this recommends that we drop that index that we no longer need. The one slightly annoying part of doing this this way is that I have to go make a code change in our code base to match the change that's occurring here. Here's our actual database schema written, of course, in Drizzle for this project. And we can see in here those indexes. So we have app ID IDX, file key IDX, external ID, and deleted. Since we have this deleted one, we no longer need the app ID one. So if I was to merge this change and then somebody was to do another push, this would break and I would have to make sure that I've also removed this from my code. It's a small thing and honestly, the way I will probably use this is rather than applying the exact recommendation they tell me to, I'm gonna use this as a way to realize, oh, these are changes I should make in my code base. And then I can go to my code, I can delete this line and then do a traditional deploy request the way I normally do. As an insight, this is incredibly informative and weirdly well written here. Yeah, new branch. I don't know if somebody on the team already created this or if it was created for us, but yeah. Just like we have branching in our code bases, we have branching here too. Very, very good and useful information. I'm assuming the other ones here, user ID, we also have user ID plus tier as an index. We no longer need the one that's just the user ID. This all makes sense. Let's read a bit more about what else this can do because our, our database is nice and hilariously simple because that's how we like to build. But I'm curious how other people are using this thing and what other stuff it can recommend. This is what's over here. Each recommendation comes with an explanation of the recommended changes, the schema or query that it will affect, the exact DDL that will apply the recommendations, as well as the option to apply the recommended changes to a branch for testing and a safe migration. You should evaluate each recommendation based on your specific use case. Read the schema recommendations documentation for more information on each recommendation. That's cool. There's a whole documentation page that describes in detail all of the things that it can make recommendations for and what you should do and what you should know about it. Adding indexes for inefficient queries, removing redundant indexes, preventing primary key ID exhaustion, and dropping unused tables. 
Really good stuff. A lot of people are missing these types of things. It's just key deletions. If we had more pressing things, like if we needed to add a key, I would absolutely do that. But wasting a little bit of data and paying you guys a little bit more is the least of my concerns. Honestly, my immediate takeaway when I saw this is I'm proud we're not missing any indexes anymore because we were missing indexes for a while. So knowing we're not is cool. And once you better understand the recommendation, you can apply the recommendation by either applying it directly with a database branch with a few clicks or making the schema change directly in your application or ORM code. Look, they called it out. I can just make it in my own code. How plan to scale the text schema recommendations in your database? We've built a system that we internally refer to as the schema advisor. You can make schema recommendations and understand when a schema change closes an existing open recommendation. Each time a production branch's schema changes within planet scale, an event is emitted to Kafka. This triggers a background job to examine the schema for potential recommendations. Interesting. More and more people doing Kafka stuff recently, which is cool to see. If any viewers aren't familiar with Kafka already, it is an ancient Apache technology for managing events and getting messages to and from things. 80% of all Fortune 100 companies are using it. So uh, does that mean planet scales on the way? To be determined. We can determine the schema alone for some recommendations, such as finding duplicate indexes. We also use the database's recent query performance and statistics for other recommendations, such as index recommendations. This we've already been relying on quite a bit, not necessarily the specific recommendations, but the feedback on the insights tab, where you have, do we not have any anomalies right now? That's a nice change. Usually we have some types of crazy anomalies that have big enough spikes in performance that we go and investigate and figure out what's causing them. So we can look back to February 23rd and see we have this anomaly here, which is from people uploading a bunch of files in a burst and our calculation for storage being used was not particularly great at the time. So we can see all of this breakdown of what queries were taking how much time. We had 22 queries per second, seven rows are being written every second, and this caused an anomaly, which is really useful for us to dig into and see the specific queries that are causing these specific problems. This has been a lifesaver for us as we try to debug more and more complex performance related issues with our databases. We first identify potentially slow query candidates for index suggestions using the insights query data. We then use Vitesse's query parser and semantic analysis utilities to extract potential indexable columns for the query. When adding indexes, column order is critically important. To get that right, we patched our fork of MySQL to create another variant of the analyze table update histogram command that allows us to extract the cardinalities of each column without impacting the database's statistic table. Yes, I want this far without saying MySQL, and I'm proud of myself. But it is important to know that not only is PlanetScale using MySQL, they are the lead maintainers and effectively owners now of Vitesse, which is a system built to scale your MySQL databases much better. Big companies like Uber and Slack and even GitHub and YouTube itself have been using Vitesse for a long time now to allow their MySQL databases to scale to insane numbers of users, data, consumers, and all the other things your database needs to serve. But that doesn't mean MySQL moves particularly fast. I think it's fair to say anything in Oracle's world is not particularly fast moving. So PlanetScale continuing to maintain their fork that works perfectly with Vitesse is fully MySQL compatible and is MySQL. To have these types of features that they need in order to give us a good experience, that's dope. It's a really cool balance they have found of existing standards, modern open source tooling, and a groundbreaking service and experience for users. It is actually really cool. With all this information combined, we can make recommendations on how to improve a database's schema. Supported schema recommendations. Today, we're launching with four different schema recs, but we will add more over time. The first is adding indexes for inefficient queries, which apparently we don't need. We're on top of our indexes now. So cool. Point two is that you can remove redundant indexes, which we saw we have a bunch of. We'll probably go clean this up later. Another fun one they've added is the ability to prevent primary key ID exhaustion. What does this mean? Let's say you're using integer IDs and you're possibly going to run out of integers soon. This will warn you and say, hey, you probably shouldn't be using indexes for that ID field anymore. Now we have the fourth thing it can do, which is telling you to drop unused tables. Good old Bobby tables are going to love that one, I'm sure. Adding indexes for inefficient queries. Indexes are crucial for relational database performance. With no indexes or suboptimal indexes, MySQL may have to scan a large number of rows to satisfy queries that only match a few records. Oh, here it is. Spending 5K to learn how database indexes work. This is an article I very, very fondly remember. I will say this problem has long since been solved as PlanetScale has fundamentally changed the pricing model. This is impossible to do at this point in time. But at the time, pricing was based on how many rows you read and wrote, and they didn't have indexes in their database. Since PlanetScale's performance is nuts, it's able to read millions of rows really quickly and still get you a response. But this comes with the problem that now you're doing a ton of work that they're billing you for. It's just because it happens fast doesn't mean you meant to run a ton of stuff that you didn't want to. 
In this example, I had a pretty basic schema here. The catch is that vendor ID was not indexed. It's just a value they use to link things together. And since it wasn't an index, and since there's no foreign keys in Vitesse, there kind of is now, separate long story. You'll see this example where you're selecting with vendor ID that this thing has to read way more rows than it's actually supposed to. Since he's getting back only 100 rows, he assumed that it was going to be a dollar and 50 cents per 10 million rows read. So reading 100 rows is fine. But you also were inspecting all of those rows to do the lookup. So every request that made this query actually cost them 15 cents because it was reading 1 million rows every time you did it. It was still fast, but the fact that you had to check a million rows on every request uses a lot of compute, ended up costing them a lot of money. And every request ended up being pretty expensive. They ended up spending about $1,000 a day. They added this one index, which knocked it down a ton. And you can see here the amount of row reads they were getting plummeted immediately. Thankfully, Planet Scale, as mentioned in chat, immediately wrote off the expense here, didn't charge them anything, and they got down to $150 a month, which is a much more reasonable price than five grand over a few days. And since then, the author is still a very happy Planet Scale customer. I think this was a great story. It both showcased the flaws in the existing pricing model, as well as how database indexes are important. It was a great article, went viral. It was actually one of the first times I heard about Planet Scale. I had just started playing with it at the time, but seeing this and the response to it really got me to consider it more seriously. So yeah, adding indexes for inefficient queries is important, and so much so that this might have saved that person a very, very scary moment. Removing redundant indexes. While indexes can drastically improve query performance, having unnecessary indexes slows down writes and consumes additional storage and memory. Insights scans your schema every time it is changed to find redundant indexes. We suggest removing two types. One is an exact duplicate index, where the index has the exact same columns in the same order. And the second is a left prefix duplicate index, an index that has the same columns in the same order as the prefix of another index. Since you can just use chunks of the index as you go through it, if two indexes have the same left side, one of them stops and the other one goes further, it matters a lot less that you have that first one because you can use the second index and just use the first two prefixes and read things super quick. Redundant indexes are remarkably common. Our initial set of recommendations found that 33% of planet scale databases have redundant indexes that they may benefit from removing. Yeah, we had three of them. Preventing primary key ID exhaustion. As new rows are inserted, it's possible for auto-incremented primary keys to exceed the maximum allowable value for the underlying column type. As I mentioned before, if you're using IDs that are like an integer and you have too many users or too many things in that column, you'll run out of IDs, now you're screwed. If Insights detects that one column is above 60% of the maximum allowable type, it'll recommend changing the underlying column to a larger type. And then dropping unused tables, pretty simple. If the table's not being used over a large amount of time, it will tell you to get rid of it. Yeah, if there's any tables that are more than four weeks old and haven't been queried in the last four weeks, good to know. Here's an example, adding a new index. Let's walk through an example, applying a new recommendation. We'll create a simple posts table. I'm sure we've all seen basically this exact table. An example projects, selects. So we have more rows to the post table, a pattern emerges. The P50 time for a post title increases linearly. Our queries are taking nearly a second, which is not good. Since we're querying for title a lot, it can recognize that maybe we need an index on title and make that recommendation. Add new index ID posts on title on table posts. So exactly what we were showing before, just adds this index to the table. You click create and apply. And now instantaneously, the amount of latency and the amount of effort it takes to do each of these queries goes down. This is really, really cool stuff. I know it's not technically AI, but it's the thing I'm excited about in that direction is almost like Copilot for your database, where once it's running, it's telling you, hey, maybe you should do this. Hey, maybe you should do this. And as Planet Scale continues in its goal of making it so people who aren't database experts can have expert quality database experiences, this makes a ton of sense. And I am genuinely really hyped about what they're shipping here. Quick ask to the Planet Scalers in the chat. Is there anything important that I missed before I wrap up? What is P50? The P50 is percentile is what the P stands for. Thank you as well. In a set of queries in this example, where you have 100 queries, maybe 10 of them were instant, like three milliseconds, and 10 of them were really slow, like three seconds. P50 would be the 50 percentile mark. So what was the average speed at that point? So 50% or more requests were faster than this. So P95 is 95% of requests were this fast or faster. 99 is this point where this fast or faster. It's a measurement for like the worst case of things. So P50 is a pretty base low average. It should be really fast. The much higher up ones, like the 99 percentile, is like this is all of our queries are falling within this range. Yeah, I'm also sad the hobby tier of Planet Scale isn't as globally available anymore. That was sad news. 
I understand why, but I was not happy to see it. And I definitely am planning around that for future tutorials and things. I've already gotten permission from Planet Scale for all of my future tutorials that use Planet Scale to also have a path for people that want to use something that's free in their region, either through another service or through just locally hosting SQLite or something. So I'm accounting for that. We're working on it. Getting rid of Scalar, yes and no. The thing with Scalar is Scalar was the same metal as the cheapest Scalar Pro plan. And when I was on Scalar, I was hitting CPU limitations more than I was hitting number of read limitations. So yeah, as bad as I am at SQL, PlanetScale is making me feel much better at it. At the very least, they're telling me when I'm doing things egregiously wrong. And I certainly need that so I can focus on the things I love, which are UI, JavaScript, full stack, and making YouTube videos. Let me know what you guys think, though, because this is a really exciting project. Thank you, as always. See you guys in the next one. Peace, nerds.